All right, so this is our first day of our search engine optimization class. We're going to talk a little bit about a theory of search engines and then some practice. I'll be giving you a couple of other handouts throughout the day. Uh, but before that, I want to do an exercise here. Um, we've got all the popular web browsers down here, so go ahead and open any web browser that you like. Um, whichever one you like, and open Opera. So open any web browser, and then we'll go. Uh, we'll go to the biggest uh, search engine. Let's go to the address Google.com. Google.com is not the first search engine. Uh, there was Yahoo before that, and probably uh, some others before that. But a search engine is basically software that helps you find something on the internet. So you've probably heard of Google, you've probably used Google, you probably use Google without trying. Maybe you use Safari and then you search for something and you don't go directly to Google but Safari still gives you Google results, search results. It's so big, Google such such a big search engine that it's become a verb. Possibly they might even lose their copyright to that name because for example if if you're if you have a if, if you have the sniffles, you're probably gonna ask, can I have a tissue? Uh, can I have a Kleenex? Well, Kleenex is a brand name, technically. But Kleenex has become so genericized in a way that people think of it that's the term for a facial tissue. But Kleenex is the name of a brand. Well, I've got some trash, I'm gonna go throw it away in the dumpster. Dumpster is a brand name. You know what it actually is is a trash receptacle, an outdoor mobile trash receptacle let's say. But dumpster is the generic name for it that they've kind of lost their copyright for. Possibly Google might f lose the same sort of name um, because it's so much in our lexicon, isn't it? Google it. I don't know that. Google it. Uh, have you Googled yourself? Etc. It's become such a, a verb and a noun and such that it might not even be their copyright anymore. Um, but this is the biggest search engine. It helps you find stuff online. Uh, let's try this. On the search box here, let's search for yourself. Search for your name as you are commonly known. If, you are, if your full name is William Jefferson Clinton, search for, self, for yourself as Bill Clinton. Right? Whatever your common name is, search for yourself as that common name. In my results page here, search engine results page, SERP, S-E-R-P, in the SERP here, I have 30 million results found in half a second. Yours may look like mine or similar or different, but at the top, there's a row of pictures of potential Victor campuses. None of these are me yet. Uh, all of these results appear right here. There's a special call-out over here also. In my case, you come to the actor. I'm not an actor. I was not born in 1935, so that's not me. But some of these results here, for example, Victor Campos LinkedIn, that's me. The second result here is one of my online presences. What else? I've got a couple of results here over at ratemyprofessors.com. Have you heard of that? That's a website where professors get rated. Kind of like Yelp. So you can look me up there. Um, Facebook profile, that's not my Facebook, that's another Victor Campos. Victor Campos, VM Campos, my website, one of my websites is listed there. Victor Campos at Brand Yourself, that one is me. And then some video that is not me. Make a note of this website, brandyourself.com. This is one of these reputation management websites. They offer a service where you can better control the message of your online presence. Because everything, just about, is on a search engine. If someone searches you on Google, Yahoo, Bing, they might find stuff about you. Stuff that might be embarrassing. Stuff that might not be true, etc. And so, a website like brandyourself.com, and another one that is useful is also called reputation.com. They offer a way for you to manage your reputation online, your brand online, people, business, etc. They do have a free service 
and then guess what? The better service is paid. But if you go create a free brand yourself profile, this is one of the ways that you can also manage your message online. Because out of these 10 results, the ones that are me, one, two, three, four, five. Five out of 10 results are me. So the more of my stuff that's online, the more that I will stand out from the competition. Let's say I'm trying to get found as an artist, and there are other Victor Campos's out there. The more of an online presence I have, the more the search engines will find me to show my results. I might get related terms, Victor Campos actor, Victor Campos attorney, Dr. Victor Campos, DJ Victor Campos, etc. Victor Campos on GitHub, that would be me. Victor Campos Quora, that would be me. So the more that you have online of yourself or your business, the better. That's part of SEO. The more you are online, the more you'll be found. It almost sounds obvious, doesn't it? Let's compare this search engine result page with the second biggest search engine. I'm going to open a different web browser. I was in Opera. I'm going to open Firefox, let's say. Open a different web browser. And this time, we'll go to the second biggest search engine. Let's go to the address bing.com, B-I-N-G, bing.com. The Google search engine comes from the Google company, technically from the Alphabet company. If you hadn't heard, within the past couple of months, Google created a new parent company called Alphabet. So good old creative Google created a company called Alphabet to manage all of their sub-businesses. Google search, Android, YouTube, Maps, Gmail, their self-driving cars, all of that stuff. It's all actually now under the parent company Alphabet. Alphabet, Google, etc. Bing is a different search engine from a different company. Anyone know what company is behind Bing? Microsoft. Microsoft. So one of the biggest names in tech. Uh, Microsoft. They've got their own search engine. Microsoft has Hotmail and Windows, Xbox, etc. They've got their own maps. There's Google Maps, there's Bing Maps. There's Bing search engine. So two big competing um, companies that both have a product that they think is better than the other, the search engine. So let's compare. This is the Bing search engine homepage. We saw Google. We've seen Google for the past uh, 15 years or whatever. Very basic homepage, just white, the name of the company, search. Bing has a different tactic where it's showing you headlines maybe an interesting picture to catch your attention. Every day is different. And search, of course. And then at the top, maps, outlook, etc. But it's a search engine. It wants to find results of what you search for. So let's compare the search results on Bing with Google. Search for your name the same way that you searched for it on Google. If you get any pop-ups with suggestions, just ignore them for the moment. But let's look at a SERP, a search engine results page on Bing. I'm going to put them side by side like this. Well, before I put them side by side, let me focus on here. So results appear, 5 million results appear instead of 30 million. Number one result is again the actor, someone else, LinkedIn. Technically, that's not my LinkedIn. It's going to LinkedIn of all the Victor campuses. Pictures, none of these are me again. There's this call out here again of Victor Campos, the actor. It looks much nicer here when they were born, the movies they were in. Um, oh, then there's my LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is right there. Then there's Facebook. That's not me. Rotten Tomatoes. That's not me. Uh, this one-star review is not me, thankfully. Uh, results of actors and attorneys and such. Victor Campos. 
photography, that's not me. Another thing about the actor. So on this search result, it's a little more varied. It still skews toward the actor, but the top result that is me is the third one. And then there's some other victors in here too. Are the pictures in there based on your profile or how many links you have and how many times you're in the web somewhere like you or five times in the other one or Google? Yeah, there's what many factors that we'll be talking about throughout the course, many signals, which is the industry term for it, many signals uh, about how do, why do we rank. So it could be a variety of things. And we'll talk about them, but oftentimes, yes, it is how much, how much are you online, how many links do you have, websites, how, what's your presence like. That informs, among other things, why you rank or what shows up of yours. Okay, so, you know, there's, they're both search engine results pages. They look very similar. White background, text, some pictures here and there. The results are a little bit different. Five million results, 30 million results. Well, you stop caring probably after the 10th or 12th or 20th result. Who cares if there's 30 million results? Raise your hand if you often are checking the third page of a, res of a results page. Almost no one. Who's checking the second page of a results page? A little less people. Who assumes your first page result is the best? So many more people. That's what the goal of SEO is, ranking on the first page of results. Doesn't matter that Google found, you know, 25 million more results, no one's gonna look at those. Both of those search engines are looking at the same internet, the same websites. Bing thinks that it has the better results, so that's what it shows. Google thinks it has the better results, that's what it shows. That's the algorithm, the computer program, the software that each uses, that is each a trade secret from from the other to find results that it thinks are better than what you're looking for. Um, let's do another pair, another comparison. Um, if you've got a, a website or a business, if you've got a business, search for the name of your business on Google. I'm going to search for the name of my business as it is spelled, as it, as it is known, just like I searched for my name as Victor Campos instead of Victor M. Campos Jr. So I'm searching for the name of my company as it's supposed to be known on Google first. And I'm going to search for it also the same way on Bing. And on both results, number one, game over. I'm on top. But this is a false result, isn't it? If the person knew the name of your company searching for it, what's the point of searching for it? You want to get found by keywords, which we'll get to in a moment. But just to show you the point of this result is this is what, in this case, Google knows about my business online. 367,000 results. Number one is our main website with, an, with a last updated date attached to it, and a description of the business. If you had heard of PMD Interactive before today, you would have thought, well, what is that? What do they do? Video games? I don't know. But if you then see here, web marketers who can create the right solution for the right price. We offer everything from social media to human resources. Okay, now I understand what they're about. That's what I need. Maybe I'll click. We'll talk about editing this entry on the search results page that is editable. We'll talk about how to edit it, what to write there, what's effective, as well as the title up here. Second result is a Facebook result. That's our Facebook. It's got some stats, number of likes, etc., a little bit of text. Then it's got a Yelp, some reviews on Yelp, a link to Yelp. Then it's got our Twitter, one of our apps on the App Store, our LinkedIn, something called alignable.com, which I'm not exactly sure what that is actually. It's only called alignable. 
our YouTube channel, directions on MapQuest, if you still use MapQuest, and uh, results on local Yahoo, also with star ratings. The point of this is that I'm showing you, obviously if the person knew that I'm part of PMD Interactive, this is a false search. Who cares that I'm number one here? What I'm showing you here is this is what Google knows and can show you on the first set of results with this search. And the point is, we don't just have a website. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Yelp, we're on Yahoo, we're apparently on Alignable. So that's the SEM aspect of things. Editing the content on your website is SEO, in short. What keywords you add to your website, what pages you add to your website, and links and all of that on your website, basically SEO. Whatever you do outside of your website, basically SEM, marketing. Because more and more we're going to see the importance of review sites and directory sites and that sort of thing. But that's SEO and SEM, what you're doing on your website, what you're doing outside of your website. I'm going to compare that then with Bing. So Bing here says, actually, it found about double the results, 617,000 instead of 300,000. Number one result is also our website. It didn't pick up on the last edit to date, but that's OK. It still shows that tagline, a variation on it. And uh, look at this, deep links. These are links from our website that are deeper than the home page. If you want to know directly, let's check out their portfolio before I hire them. If I want to see what uh, their social media prowess is, go oh, there. If you want to request a quote directly, there it is. Bing is doing us a favor. Right away, there's a link right to request a quote. Whereas Google, you first have to go to the website, check the website out, find the request quote, request a quote. Bing, right away, gives us a deep link. Six of them. What is a PMD? What is that? It's the initials of the founder of the business. Um, then there's another entry here directly to services. Okay, there's Twitter again. Twitter results just like on on Google, but uh, this Twitter result I believe was is ranked higher than the Facebook. I uh, know it is Twitter Twitter and then. Facebook. Actually, wait. Facebook doesn't. Oh yeah, no, no. Facebook is Facebook is higher on Google than Twitter, but they're both social networks. On Bing, we've got Twitter higher than Facebook, so just different alignments and slightly different view. It shows number of followers to that stands out there. Here's the Yelp again. Uh, phone number phone number directly there. It didn't show the phone number on the Yelp of Google, even though they're both checking the same Yelp. Yelp is a separate company. There's Facebook. Facebook, you can also do ratings of businesses. If you didn't know, Google doesn't show the ratings. Bing shows the ratings. Bing is helping us. It's showing, uh, it's showing potential clients, you know, star ratings. Uh, how do you decide how to hire a plumber or a, or a realtor or a web design company? You know, what are, what, is, what are other people rating it? How are they rating it? What are they saying about it? Bing is making it easier for small businesses then to promote their ratings to help, uh, you know, word of mouth to get you more traffic and such. What else? Say um, the Google Plus account with videos, the LinkedIn account, and then the Facebook, oh, that's interesting, it shows Facebook in two ways, one which is the, ra the rating for it and one which is just the main site for it. Interesting. But anyway, here's a full page results of uh, from Bing about what Bing knows about our business. And uh, what the way people will really be searching for though is not like this. They're going to be searching for web designers, web marketers, local San Diego designers, affordable restaurant website designers. They're going to search for keywords. So now let's try to do a keyword search first on Google. Put in a basic keyword. Don't worry yet about putting in complex keywords like web design San Diego 91912. Don't 
get too complicated yet. Just put in the basic concept of what your business is. If I wanted to be found, my business for web design, let's say. Search the basic concept of your business or your online presence as a basic keyword on both search engines. I search for web design in Google, and if I can tell those digits properly, that is 1.6 billion results. Not million, billion. Google gave me 1.5 billion results. Bing gives me only 1.5 billion. Google is 1.6 billion. Bing is only 1.5 billion. So lots of results. And here's what the typical result page looks like nowadays. A moment ago when I searched for my name and my company directly, I did not see these. I did not see ads. I did not see these, these ads popping out here. I didn't see a nice map. Look, all of that looks like San Diego has a disease. But it's um, web designers in San Diego. And there's a, there's a cool little map. There's a cool pop-out with, a, with a, like these guys look like they paid a lot of money to get featured here or with their directions and everything. On the side there's also ads and then after all the ads and such then there's the basic listings. And if I look at the basic listings there's a Yelp taking up one of the spots. There's a Wikipedia article taking up another one of the spots. Um, there's an article about top designers taking up one of the spots. Stuff about the news. Um, and so you're seeing here out of 10 possible slots, three of them, 30% or so, are being taken up by articles, news reports, you know, directory listings and such. The ones that actually have ranked as a real company online, we have BOP Design. But if a person that is not quite computer savvy looks at this top at these search results, they're gonna say this company is the best one. They're number one rated. So I'm gonna click and I'm gonna hire them. A less savvy user is going to go directly to the literal top result, click and hire them. But that's an ad. The organic result is BOP Design. It's not marked as an ad. So I'll explain those differences in, in a moment. Let me compare now with Bing. I also searched Web Design. Number one result, Wix.com. They must be the best. They're the first one. Then comes Top 10 Web Design. 2015. Okay, then comes graphic design. Uh, get an education as a graphic designer. Hmm. Then jumping down a bit more. Oh, the Wikipedia article again. Google web designer. An article from about.com. Tutorials from tootsplus.com. And GoDaddy. And then Wix. So we're getting such a range of results here. Ads, tutorials, real companies, local companies, out-of-state companies, a lot of results. And I'm showing this on purpose by using this very generic keyword. You probably are savvy enough to type in web designers in San Diego or restaurant web designers you know, being a little bit more specific. We'll talk about that specificity in a little bit. But I'm showing you here that still there's a large demographic of people that search like this, that search in very generic terms. And therefore, it's going to be very hard for you to crack this top 10. Some of these slots are not going to be knocked out. Wikipedia, you're never going to be Wikipedia on a topic. It's uh, got so much traffic globally. You're also possibly not going to beat some of these other bigger companies like Wix. Because let me ask you this. We're going to learn SEO the easy way and the hard way. 
How many of you would like to learn the easy way? Raise your hand. All right, take that hand, reach into your wallet, take your credit card out. <laughs> That's the easy way. You're going to pay a variety of ways for placement. These ads right here, they paid for that. They paid to be number one, quote unquote number one. They're the number one result via paying for a spot. When you're not paying, then it's known as organic SEO, organic results. These ones over here didn't pay. Wikipedia doesn't need to pay. Ask, actually, they're asking for money right now. Uh, Jacob Tyler didn't need to pay. Webdesign.org? What is that? Oh, tutorials. It's not even a real web design company. It's tutorials. Web.com, small business web design team, offers first class website building. Okay, so um, then Google Web Designer. So there's organic SEO, the hard way, and then you might have heard of the topic or the, or the word PPC, pay-per-click. That's the easy way, relatively. You're paying per click to get traffic. We're not going to be talking about, in this class, PPC. We're not going to be talking about spending for placement because that is an arms race that always is running. Um, you might pay, you might put a budget of ten dollars and you rank really well. Then your competitor pays fifteen dollars and now they're ranking better. You're number two and they're number one. And still, as I said, many people are gonna select the first one if they're less tech savvy. Okay, well then you pay twenty dollars and you're number one again. Well then they pay a hundred dollars you're going to pay 120. So it's an ever escalating thing, especially for some of the most competitive keywords. Web design, that's probably a very expensive keyword to buy. You can buy keywords, you can buy placement, all of this stuff. It's a, it's a whole big thing. PPC and paying for placement and all of that is a whole topic that I could teach a whole class on. We're not going to focus on that because again that's an arms race. That's something for someone that has a budget to spend as if they were spending, like in the real world, to spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars for a TV ad, a newspaper ad, a radio ad, flyers. You know, it takes money to make money. And you can easily spend money, lots of money, lots of real money, on search engine results. Paying for placement is very useful. I'm not trying to put it down. Uh, it's very useful, especially if you're a brand new business trying to break into a market that's already saturated. Set aside a budget of $100, $2,000, whatever. Break into the market. Once you've got some penetration, then you start to use the organic methods. But we're going to be focusing pretty much in this class about organic methods, the hard way. The way that takes more effort and time, but builds a foundation for the long term. Because once your budget runs out, you might not be number one again very quickly. And all of that money possibly has gone away. All of that effort from that money. Sometimes I have people coming to my classes that say, I had a, an SEO company that were really nice and cool and, they, and I paid them and, and I got number one and I was there a while and, and it was great and I, I'm not with them anymore and I want to do it myself and my company is like on page 40 now. What, what do I do? Possibly what that great company that was hired did was the client pays that company and part of the money that they paid, they used it to rank via pay-per-click. They used part of that money for placement. Then when the contract ended with those SEO companies, the money dried up for placement, and so did their ranking. They dropped down. So we'll be talking about doing it yourself, doing it the hard way, but putting a foundation for future results. The freeway. Is that what that faint line separates the organic versus the paid? Yeah, that's one of the things if you notice. On Google, it's very obvious what the ads are. They make it big and yellow. On Bing, it's not so much. They probably will change it, but at the moment, you have to look carefully. That's an ad. Did you notice that said ad? Over here, this one's a little more obvious. The state line, that's an ad. And then eventually when these ads run out, the organic stuff starts, which is right over here, another faint line. So yeah, Bing, at the moment, I don't quite like how they don't eliminate their ads very easily. But uh, each has a way to each has a way that um, they feel that is the best results. 
I'll do one more search, then we'll take a break. I'm going to back up here to Google. This time I'm going to search for... Well, let me do it like this to show off. Many times we have um, smartphones and they have the ability to search, obviously. Uh, let me do a search right here for my phone. What's a good Italian restaurant nearby? Here are 10 Italian restaurants that have good reviews. Okay, so my phone tells me Italian restaurants with good reviews. It tapped into Yelp and my location to tell me nearby that uh, Cucina Basilico is good, 1.8 miles away. It's got four and a half stars with 164 Yelp reviews. Volari Italian Restaurant is five and a half miles away. It's got four stars out of 361 Yelp reviews. Great. Click. Give me directions. I'm on my way. This is how we're searching more. Maybe you've never done it, but many, many more people are doing it. Let's say I'm not doing it on my phone. Let's say I'm doing it here. Authentic Italian food Chula Vista. You're probably searching for things a little more specifically not just Italian food. You're gonna get Godfather's Pizza. You're gonna get uh, Olive Garden, etc. No, I'm looking for Italian, authentic Italian food in Chula Vista, a specific location. Top result, one of my clients right here. Four and a half stars, 17 reviews. Top, top most placement, free. This is not paid for at all. This is through various aspects of SEO and having great food that they are ranked number one with this kind of result where I was a little bit more specific. This nice map that stands out right there. Their competitor is right down the street, but and then way over here in East Lake. So these are the ones, top results without payment. And then results on Yelp. That's that same client, number one, but it's not their website, Yelp. Um, there's a list of best Italian food restaurants from Yelp. The client is also listed in it, then uh, the competitor. Then there's the client's website itself. It's not the number one result, but does it matter? I'm seeing on Yelp a great review and the price range and the number of reviews and all of that, I'm seeing that highly up there without the um, the website being number one. I'm seeing the website featured also on TripAdvisor. That's another rating and ranking site like Yelp, but it's more for travelers. Very high reviews there as well. Uh, a little bit of a... Um, uh, of a um, uh, of a testimonial right there, that's useful. Again, word of mouth. There's a top 10 list here, top 10 best restaurants in Chula Vista. 15 Chula Vista restaurants that will blow the taste buds off of your tongue. Um, from movoto.com, it's guide, the yellow pages, Zomato, or Zomato. Um, so this client, out of these 10 results, has like seven or eight results without mentioning their name. That's the goal of SEO, getting found by the keywords that people are searching for. And nowadays people are more specific. You saw me ask my phone in a very natural way. That's the holy grail of search, natural language search. I ask it like I'm asking a person. And so my phone gave me those results. Because I didn't specify a location, it assumed my location and it gave me answers from around here. Over here, I specified down in Chula Vista and it gave me the result of that client. Eventually, then, the, the highest level of this search would be Authentic Italian Food San Diego. That one's a little harder to crack because literally San Diego could be downtown San Diego. And you've got much more competition in the bigger metropolis, you got all of Little Italy, of course, to, to compete against. But the point is specific. It's okay that I'm not perhaps ranking here for all of San Diego, um, maybe not on the first page, maybe on second or third or fifth or whatever, 
but the point is you need to know your competition also. That's something we'll talk about, your competition, because you're not going to be the only Italian food restaurant, the only web designer, the only realtor, the only daycare, the only uh, gluten-free, vegan, organic dog walkers out there. You're going to be one of many, perhaps. And so SEO and SEM help you stand out from the competition. And the way we're learning it in this class is um, the long way, the organic way, which sets a foundation for future results. Yes? Um, can, you, can you do the voice search? Like, you just do the phone, the desktop, or...? Google, I believe, has started to add the ability, and Bing will probably add it soon as well, uh, the ability for you to do the, the voice search. On Google, I've noticed there's a little microphone sometimes on the little search right there, search by voice. Use your microphone, allow. Authentic Italian food nearby. Okay, yeah, Here are the listings for authentic Italian food nearby. Bing isn't doing it just yet, but I know that uh, because Bing is part of Microsoft, I know that if you've got a Windows computer or an Xbox, you can say, hey Xbox, what's a good Italian food restaurant? And it searches. So voice search is also coming to, you know, regular search like this. Just uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. I wonder why um, if they when you search for the you know for these examples like um, Italian restaurants like when earlier we just did with the uh, web design in San Diego right? mm -hmm. and then you, you know the, you said like the cup the first couple would be those the paid for mm -hmm. right because you know they got many things they add right that's for the mm -hmm. people and, and things and so on. but I mean I wonder how come like it's different with the with the restaurant. Like they, they don't pay for them to be found? They, they would also be paid. Um, the, I mean, they don't pay to be found, like the web design company? They do. That particular search that I did um, looked a little bit different, and this is just that it's, it, you often get different results based on different, uh, different search terms and such. Uh, I did the same sort of exact search of talent authentic Italian food in Bing and notice how these results are very different as well. So yeah, there is also payment for to the search engines for placement if you're a restaurant or a business, not just a service. So why did this appear different than the web design result? I can't exactly say. The search engines always change their techniques. These techniques are trade secrets. They're not going to tell you exactly how their search engine works because if Bing revealed how it creates its results, then Google would steal it. Or Google would reveal it, Bing would steal it, or Yahoo would steal it. They're all in competition. It, it seems like uh, the, uh, you know, when they got in a restaurant search, uh, it seems like they based on the Yelp review. Yes, exactly. Good, know, good thing that you. From the good thing you meant you you spotted that ratings for restaurants, especially, are very valuable. So if you're not on Yelp, you could be losing out. Maybe you're already on Yelp and you never knew it. Someone, anyone, can create your Yelp profile. You don't have to create it. So one of the things I'll mention later is check yourself out on Yelp. You probably have a Yelp presence even though you don't know it. And if you don't know it, and you're getting bad reviews, that could be hurting you on the search engines. Basically, when you give a review to a restaurant, you help someone make money. You are, or the opposite, if you put a bad review as well, unfortunately. Um, I did the same result on Bing. Look at these results. I got this very cool top result over here that really stands out. There's my client again, right at the top. Yes, the guy down the street is more to the left, but they're still all in the same row. Third Avenue, Third Avenue, Birch, Third Avenue, oh yeah, uh, Broadway, East Lake Parkway, Birch, and Three Vista. Papa John's, two stars, two stars, three stars. No stars, four and a half, four. So all of them, well, at least these, at least these four right here, seem to have good stars. 164 reviews, 256, 265, 262, 470. So
So yes, it ties into many times you're going to see results from these from these review sites tied into the search engine, especially for services, uh, sometimes for products also. So that's something to think about. That's why in this class I address SEO and SEM. Yelp is part of SEM. It's something you do outside of your website. And then these results, the number one result is Yelp. The number two result is Yelp, but from this client. The number three result is the client. Number four is the competitor. Number five is TripAdvisor, another rating site. Then Super Pages, and then Yahoo, and then Zomato. So this is modern search results based on a variety of signals ranking companies, which we will be talking about in this class. Any questions so far? Let's take our first break, now that you have some ideas. When we come back then, we'll talk about more details about, okay, I want to be found like that. I'm never going to remember the name of the company, Italianissimo Trattoria. I can't even say it. How am I going to type it? I'm going to be searching for authentic Italian food. I want to be found like that. That's the concept of the long tail keywords. We'll take a, we're going to take a break, then we'll talk about that concept. It's 7.10, we'll be back at 7.20 and we'll go on.